Hi everybody, I'm Sally Cox. I'm here today to show you how you can create master slides in Adobe Captivate 5.5 and more importantly why you might want to use master slides. So I have a blank project open and I've got my master slide panel open right here. If you don't see yours, you can go up under the window menu and find it. And if you see a check mark, it's already showing. Now, when I brought it up initially, it came up and was floating like this. So I grab the top of it and drag it down to my timeline and it automatically docks in there nicely with my timeline. Why would you want to use master slides? Well, I use them all the time and I'll give you some examples of why I use them. But first, let me explain what a master slide is. You can create a master slide, which is like a master page in Adobe InDesign, or even something that you might use in Word. So a master has everything on it that you're going to repeat over and over again. So for example, if you're doing a large project, um, I've done a project for uh, an HR department, and they wanted something on healthcare. So they wanted sections on emergency room procedures and full-time benefits, part-time benefits, maternity leave, and so forth. There's a perfect example where you want to break it up into different sections and you want to have some kind of a, a slide that's introducing that new section. That's where a master slide can come in handy. So you can put elements on the master slide that will appear on every one of those subject slides, but you can then go in and vary it by adding a different image or adding text to make it look like it's all part of the same project, but still have different content on it. So on my master slide, first I want to show you how you can change the color, the background color. So I'm in my master slide and I'm over here in the properties panel. If I uncheck project background, I'm then able to go in here into my stage and choose an existing swatch. These are some of the ones I've used in recent projects, or I can go in and build my own if I like, and I can even use the eyedropper to pick up a color in an image. So first, let me show you that. I'm going to go into my library. I've already got the image in here that I want to use. If you're bringing an image in from scratch, you simply go into the insert menu and choose image. Now I'm bringing an image over. First, let me go in here and put my project background back. And I'm going to go in here and pull this image in. It's a lovely image um, of a beach scene in California. And I'm going to go back to my properties. And because I have the image selected, the properties panel is context sensitive, meaning that right now I'm working on the image as opposed to if I'm clicked on the slide, then I'm just working on the slide properties. So while I'm on the image, I can go down here to the bottom to the transform section. This is the way I resize images. This is a very large image that I brought in. I could grab a corner handle and hold my shift key down and drag it, but that takes a while. I'm going to use my transform section and I'm going to go to the X and Y and set those to zero. And here I'm using my tab key to navigate and I'm going to make the width 500 pixels. And as long as constrained proportions is checked, when I click enter or return, my image automatically retains the proportion, but now it fits onto my slide nicely. There's some beautiful colors in here I might want to pick up from my background. So what I'm going to do is, again, go back to my slide, uncheck Project Background, and go to Stage. Now, I could use my eyedropper to come out here and pick up a color. I'm going to use a color I've already chosen because I've already done this before, and I'm using the same color. And I can go in here again and hold my Shift key down and resize my image if I want to. And I can go in here and start adding some other elements. Keep in mind that everything that you put on the master slide is going to be locked when you actually use it. So if you want to use text, don't put it on here. So, but for example, maybe I do want to add some text. I'm going to bring in a text caption. So I'm going to use a text caption and type um, Southern California scene. And I'm going to set my caption type to be transparent because I want it to look like it's text that's inherent on the slide, not an actual caption. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, select my text, and I can go in here and make my text larger. I could change it to bold or would change the font, whatever I want. And I'm going to go in here and choose a color. So the color I'm going to use is, I'll just pick that shade right there. I've got it bold. So I've got the start of what I want it to look like. I can go in here and grab my line tool, hold my shift key down and create a line. 
I'm holding shift because that keeps it perfectly horizontal. And then I can change the width of the line. I can change the stroke color if I want, maybe make it, um, you know, just pick a different shade here that I want to use, make this a little bit wider. So I'm going in here and starting to build the content that I want on this particular slide. And here's how this works. When I go back here to my, let's say I want to add a new slide. So I'm going to right click in my film strip and go to slides, new slide. It's automatically bringing in the master slide because I told it to. I have mas used the master slide background on here, but I can set it to be a blank slide if I want. So let's say you're building your content. This is the first slide that you have, and maybe you want to go in here and put some subject matter on here. So again, using that HR example that I gave, maybe I want this to say emergency room procedures. And again, I'm setting this to transparent. And I'm going to pop this over in the corner and perhaps I want to make this uh, bolder. And I might even want to bring an image in that pertains to emergency room procedures. Make this a little bit larger, uh, maybe even make it italic, something like that, just so that it looks a little bit different than the original master slide did. And then I'm going to go in and to my next slide. Maybe this is where my content starts. And then I have a few slides where I'm talking about emergency room procedures. And then when I'm ready to bring in uh, another blank slide and apply my master to it, I just simply go over here into my properties and choose that master slide. So maybe here I want to repeat the same text, the same look and feel. I'm going to copy this and then paste it on this other slide and then change something here. So maybe this will be um, part-time employment. So again, this is how I can use my master slides to create new sections within a project. It's a really great idea. It allows you to do some beautiful design work and then just keep repeating it, not have to copy and paste everything. And you have total control over where you apply those master slides. You can have multiple master slides and you can even pull them out and bring them into another project if you like. That's how you can create master slides within Adobe Captivate 5.5.